Next up is this cabinet. So I had all the cabinets um, CNC'd out of three quarter Baltic birch marine ply. Um, I worked with a company who builds cabinets and basically we came up with these designs and we fit it all in here and got it to work. Real stone countertop, picked it up from a slab yard in Miramar in San Diego and uh, basically gave him the cabinet, gave him the sink. He had it CNC'd and polished and this thing is awesome. So as far as the sink goes, um, I have a soap dispenser. In a van, everything needs to be just so and available whenever you need it and not available to fall over. So I've got the sink, soap, um, a small little, little, you know, kind of an oval shaped sink that fit in here pretty nicely. Um, drawer stop, everything is all RV latches and self-closing. Um, again, these were like, these drawers are literally gonna be here for an eternity. This stuff is made way over engineered, but that's the way they wanted to do it. Um, and here's all, you know, coffee maker, stuff that you need, pots and pans. Uh, the lagoon stops this from opening, but I also have a bunch of cast iron skillets back there. So they can't fly out because the lagoon arm keeps them in there. And then in here is where I keep some bottled water and then just whatever. Also, there's access to the electrical panel from the other side. So the lagoon arm is really cool. So if I'm, say, want to relax or lounge, you can sit like this, which is really cool. It's super comfortable. The way that the actual the curvature of the beam behind me like fits your back, ideally. You can also get to all your electrical stuff over here, which we'll go over in a minute. The Lagoon is super awesome, um, especially when it's time for work. You can drop this bad boy down like that and lock it in place. And then your laptop ready, ready to go. And it goes down a little bit further as well. Also too, like if you're hosting, this can be kind of like a little coffee table when you're hanging out. This area over here with this kind of a void usually winds up being like day stuff. Day packs, backpacks, extra shoes, jackets, crap that just doesn't have a place. Magically winds up in this little thing underneath the lagoon arm. All right, cool. So we're checking out the, this is all the electrical panel. This is the S-Bar diesel heater thermostat. Love the product super accurate it keeps an accurate temperature which is key um, I used a 110 style panel but these are all 12 volt uh, USB sockets for charging iPads watches everything you need that's the inverter switch you can hear it kicking on um, this is my 12 volt panel so everything that's 12 volt um, water pump refrigerator in the front refrigerator in the back everything that's 12 volt runs off of this bad boy so it's all circuit breakered if something blows, you can reset the circuit there. As you can see, I've buried the inverter on one of these cabinet faces in the back, so you can't really see it, but you can still get to it. So if you want extra 110 outlets, they're up here. Also has a battery voltage meter on it, which is kind of nice. Or you can switch it to watts and see what you're actually pulling out of your battery bank. 3000 watt uh, Windy Nation inverter. Things a champ. I've never had a problem with it. I've never overloaded it. I've been able to run a 1400 watt water heater and an 1100 watt toaster oven at the same time. No problem. All right, cool. So this is the Vannon powder coated aluminum, I guess, overhead cabinet. So what I normally use this section for, everything's been gutted. When they did the detail, they cleaned every single section of it. So everything's been taken out. But normally this will be like uh, cooking supplies, pantry, and then from here back is all closed. So this makes a really great, basically like multi-purpose storage thing. And these sliders are amazing. If you've ever heard anybody uh, in van life, hard left is a no-no, meaning you never take hard lefts. If you do, everything falls out of your cabinets, guaranteed. So these sliders are key because nothing falls out, which is amazing. And that word hard left will come up in your future if you buy this van or any van. <laughs> Hard left's a real thing. Uh, one other thing, uh, it's a passenger van, so they have these emergency exit windows. And that is super cool. Uh, I never got around to it, but I originally wanted to get some sort of hinge or uh, like, a, like a gas strut to hold it open, but that is super cool. I never finished that project, but that is something that if you wanted to, you can do, those open wide up. Got my handy dandy rug right here and then underneath is just more of the lawn seal but this being that it's black 
helps trap some of the dirt that comes in. So this is actually a real Mercedes seat. Um, I changed the configuration of it, obviously. There's rails underneath the floor where this bolts directly into the frame. I kept the same mounts and everything. I wasn't okay with only having two passengers. I needed to have four. So this is a real seat. It's got real seat belts. Um, it's legit. So if you have two kids, this is gonna work out better for you. The Revel, I think, does have two seats, but it like puts the people next to each other. It's a really weird configuration. And you're also sideways. So if you get in an accident, that's gonna be a disaster. Um, if you have kids or you wanna actually use the vehicle as a car too, that's why I put this configuration in with the bench seat in place. Keep everybody safe, so. Real seat belts, real seat, no problems. So this is a hose bib. Um, all the water in the van is heated by the water heater. If you don't want hot water everywhere, then just turn the water heater off. If you do, hot water comes out of here. There's also another matching one in the rear. Um, this is where I take showers. If you want to take a shower inside, I've used like a little small tray and a small curtain that wraps around. It's not the best idea, but if you have to in a pinch, here's your hot water outlet to take a shower. Welcome to the bed area. Um, it is a fixed bed. I feel like honestly, when you're out hiking and camping and using the van, your bed is going to be the highest, most valuable thing you have in the entire van. So it's a Tempur-Pedic six inch mattress pad. I originally had a different mattress in here that was only three inches, but my girlfriend was a side sleeper and she kept complaining like my hips hurt and all this stuff. So I replaced it with a new mattress. She was stoked and I was actually shocked that I didn't do it sooner because it's that comfortable. These are the Explorer Outfitters magnetic curtains. These are pretty awesome. Um, so when they're up, you can't see anything in or out, but like if you're a little bit sketched out at night or something, or you want to see something during the day, you can just pull them and pop them down. If you want more light, like when I work in here in office mode, I usually pull these down to let more light in, um, but it's kind of gives you that multi-purpose vibe. And then this is the air handler for the factory Mercedes secondary air conditioner. This thing is absolutely freaking critical. Like if you want to sleep in climate control, this thing is key. Um, desert in the middle of summer, 110 degrees, doesn't matter. You just turn this bad boy on, it takes a little bit to cool the van down, but eventually it'll be a nice box in here. I would literally never get another van without this. This is definitely the best idea. Only comes with the passenger van, unfortunately. Um, so it does have windows all the way around. They're all Mercedes windows. They're not jankified. I didn't put these in myself with whatever. Also, all the paneling is all Mercedes stuff. So like basically the whole van shell inside is professionally done by Mercedes. A lot of times when you look at van conversions, this is by far the hardest thing for an independent guy to do is mold around all these crazy shapes that Mercedes has and get it to fit just right. Hence why I didn't get a cargo. I wanted this all to be polished and look perfect. I wasn't trying to have you know, things hanging out and a half-ass wiring job. So this is a mattress pad. On top of this, I have a heating pad, which is really cool and it gets super chilly and you don't want to run the diesel heater. You can just use the heating pad, which is exceptional. It runs from the inverter, keeps this thing toasty as hell. Um, I've slept in like negative 10 without the diesel heater and just the heating pad and that was fine. That covers basically the curtains, the bed, the air conditioner, and how the bed works. So yeah, and then too, you'll notice there's a headrest missing here. That's how you get up here. All right, so these are the, uh, the curtains for the rear. These are also double limo back here so that no one can really see in. And the magnets hold them in place. Gotta have them. The bed panel. So the way the bed works, it's fixed, but everything in the van is modular. So there's three panels. They're all covered in 3M, kind of like, almost like a Gorilla Grip stomp pad on a surfboard. It's the same stuff, it just doesn't have any texture. It holds the mattress pad in place. And then also like, if you don't have the mattress on and you're crawling around on your knees, it's gonna help protect it. All the drawers in the cabinets, all the drawers back here, all the cabinets have them in there to stop rattles and to keep everything from banging around and to keep stuff from sliding. I think, if I remember correctly, I spent like $1,200 on this foam stuff to go in everywhere. It's the legit stuff that will last forever. Um, I just knew that I was gonna wanna make sure that nothing rattled and also stayed in place and added a little bit level of comfort. So that's all over the place. Um, this is where the mattress pad hooks up. I don't have it on right now, but this is all the controllers for it. It has 
dual sides, his and hers controls. You can go up zero to 10, 10 you're like sweating. So um, the mattress framework is basically two cabinets over the wheel well cabinets. They're pushed to the side and wedged out by these center boards and that's what keeps everything together. Um, they each have three bolts. They're mounted into the frame. So six bolts in both of these cabinets and this all come out of the van. The seat on latches folds out, comes out of the van and the kitchen cabinet has two bolts that are into the frame. Pull those. So basically you can gut the van in about two hours, pull every single thing out. Like say you wanted to go, I don't know, haul something. You can pull all this stuff out and have access to just the shell of the van. This back here is the main water heater. Or this is where you're basically gonna take most of your showers is off of the rear. This is your gravity water fill. This is where the hose actually hangs. Um, I'll show you in a minute. I'm gonna actually go through and put everything back in the van. It's all been taken out to be cleaned. Back in here is the over the wheel 20 gallon water tank. This blue line is your overflow. So once you fill it up, it'll start spitting out of there once to let you know it's full. All right, so we're in the garage. We're on top of the, the slide. Um, I installed the slide because I wasn't able to get to anything easily. Like anything that was in this area was nearly impossible to reach. Basically, this is a bed slide for a truck. It had to be modified because they didn't have one this dimensions, um, but it holds a thousand pounds. This thing is bulletproof. You can put five people on the end of it, fully extended, and it won't break. Right here is the backside of the 12 volt Dometic drawer style refrigerator. By the way, this holds like a shocking amount of stuff. Like it's crazy. I, I would say you can probably hold 40 beers in here and then it's full. Okay, so here's the battery bank. Uh, there's two batteries running parallel that direction and then there's two stacked up next to each other here. 400 hours of batteries, 3000 watts on the inverter. You can't see it, it's back here. And then 60 amp battery charger, the Sterling charger. This is the uh, drawer, the back of the drawer refrigerator, the Dometic 12 volt drawer refrigerator. There's the water heater. And um, also one other thing too, these are two watt wires. Everything is run in two watt, all from the main batteries everywhere. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any overheating issues or problems. So I basically didn't skimp on anything. I just went with the best of the best. All right, so this is the four and a half gallon water heater. So we have 20 gallons in here, four and a half in the water heater. Behind my head, I keep uh, two five gallon jugs for pulling water out of rivers, basically anywhere. So like if you're not near a hose fill and you need water, you can pull it out of a river, drop a couple sanitizing drops in there, and then you can gravity feed it into there. So you have about 35 gallons of water. So what you're looking at there is the accumulation pump and the water pump right like that. So the little black bladder is what keeps the pressure maintained. And then the actual silver thing is the water pump. So it's all accessible. If you blow a water pump, it ruins your day. If you saw earlier in the video, I keep a spare underneath the seat just for that reason. So now that we finished loading it back up, we've got the tour done, you know what it is. I'm pretty sure you wanna buy it. Where are you about to go with it? Let me know. Leave a comment below.